Sergeant Charlie Gill is on assignment in Oyten at the Boselager competition in northern Germany. And he phoned in tonight's lead story. Some 2,100 Allied soldiers have gathered in the small town near Kiel, West Germany, for the Boselager Challenge. The eight events include teams from West Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Turkey, Norway, Spain, and others to include two teams from the United States. Last year, for the first time in the history of the Cup, the Americans won. The 11th Armored Cavalry team wants to do it again. Last year's second place team, although it didn't get as much publicity, was a team from the 1st Armored Division. A spokesman for the 1st AD team offered no predictions, saying, we'll do our talking on the field. And that starts tomorrow morning with the small arms fire competition. Opening ceremonies begin in about an hour. In 18 West Germany, at Bostelager 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. Sergeant Gill will be sending in reports throughout the week on the annual NATO competition. The annual Boslager competition got underway today in Oitin, West Germany. Sergeant Charlie Gill is there. It was a bright, warm early evening as the 13th Boslager Cup competition officially began. A Dutch military band greeted the contestants as they marched down the parade field in Oitin. Twenty-four allied teams from 11 nations have gone through months of preparation for this week. In less than 24 hours, these clean uniforms will have been drugged through the West German force as soldiers scramble through eight events aimed at the livelihood of a scout. Reconnaissance. The two U.S. teams are the 1st Squadron 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, last year's winners, and the first winning American team ever. The other U.S. team, the 1st Squadron 1st Armored Division. They were runners-up last year, and the trainers say they are even more ready this year. I'm sure they'll do well. They've trained hard. They, they trained harder this year, I think, than, than we did last year, and I'm sure I feel very confident in, in this year's team. Confident, but not overconfident. So I think we'll do really well. Good. We were both on last year's competing team, so it gives us a different view of uh, what's going on with the team and how they train for the competition. I think, you know, the experience we had from last year competing, all of the staff was on last year's team, so it really helps making it a better team. To enter a competition this tough, a soldier has to have his reasons for 11 months of hardship. Well, I realize that this is the biggest military competition in the free world, and it's a chance for me to enhance my soldiering skills and to, to learn a lot more. Well, I felt it was an opportunity to better myself, my soldiering skills, uh, and a chance to represent my country uh, was the main reason for this. Each of these soldiers on the American team worked hard to be even chosen. And there is a challenge even for a competent leader. These are eight guys that, are, that in a lot of ways beat me in physical stuff. They're all very intelligent, and they all have really good ideas. And so in a normal unit, you don't normally have uh, soldiers that, that are always trying to take charge. And here, there are eight different leaders. Four days of the toughest tests for cavalry soldiers will determine who takes home the coveted Boselager Cup. At Oiten, West Germany, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. Phoned in this update on the day's events. Good weather played a role for allowing all the teams to start according to schedule. The high temperatures also made the obstacle course and day reconnaissance even more grueling. Earlier today, the American 1st Armored Division team took the lead in small arms fire, but have now settled down to fourth place with about 19 teams yet to fire. The 11th Armored Cavalry team completed the day reconnaissance this morning, as did four other teams. The scores have not been posted because of the difficulty in tallying points. Day recon is the most critical of all the events. To do poorly here could easily cost the Boselager Cup. However, the 11th ACR cadre seemed optimistic about the team's performance. In Oikin, West Germany, at Boselager Cup 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. Throughout the week, AFN will keep you updated on the Boselager Cup competition. Almost everyone in Usera has heard of the Boselager Cup, but outside Oitin, West Germany, not too many people have knowledge of Oitin. Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams shows us the town. Oitin lies halfway between the cities of Lübeck and Kiel, about 100 kilometers northeast of Hamburg. In the heart of the Schleswig Holstein province, this 725-year-old city has about 18,000 residents. They welcome some 30,000 visitors a year. Many of these visitors are Danish and have come to appreciate the beauty of what is referred to as Holstein's Switzerland. The town is particularly attractive to tourists because of its pleasant surroundings, most notably the many lakes in the area and its proximity to the Baltic coast. Here is where 24 teams from 12 allied nations have gathered to compete in the 1988 Boselager Cup. Redberg Caserne in Oitini is home of the 6th Armored Recon Battalion, 
the host of this year's competition. The battalion took first place among the German teams that competed last year. Poitin is a picture postcard inviting and relaxing city. And relaxing is what many of the participants are doing in this little time they have before they begin to do battle in the 1988 Bozalaga Cup. In Oitin, Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams, AFN News. Today, the Bozalager Cup competition in Oitin, West Germany, moved into its second day. We have a three-part report, starting with Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams of AFN Bremerhaven. Not only will these eight soldiers swim more than 300 yards at full speed as part of the Bozalager Cup competition, they must carry with them a full pack and for every item that gets wet, a penalty. If that's not enough, the weapon they carry must be able to fire after the crossing. After seven months of swimming day after day, this event is still no easier. Neoprene wetsuits slowed their progress. However, one soldier turned in his personal best. But usually I'm like the fourth guy across, and this time I was second. I, I impressed myself. <laughs> it's the first time it's ever happened, probably never happen again. What, what, what do you attribute that to? Must be the sneakers. In this event, teamwork is a deciding factor for success. One team member, nearly exhausted himself, went back to ensure his teammate arrived quickly and safely. By going back to the water, my taking uh, skipper's pack, spec fork skipper's pack, if I, when I bring it back in, it's a lot, I'm a lot quicker with the pack than he is. And he can swim freestyle, thus making him his time in quicker. And that'll cut seconds off. A few seconds here and there adds up a lot, so it's very important. Once back on shore, the team had to secure the area. Then the items were checked for wetness. Everything was dry, giving the team an early first place in this event, giving the swim coach some well-earned satisfaction. I spent a lot of time training these men, and they're some of the, the best people I've ever worked with. They came through real, really well. Uh, some people, you know, they were slower before, and they came out in the front of the pack this time, so I'm very impressed by it what they put out here today. What was different that you saw here today that, that's a little bit different than practice though? Was there, were there any irregularities that you didn't really expect? Well, just the terrain surrounding the lake was a little different and the wetsuits the German uses, they're a lot heavier than what we use, Sergeant. So other than that, it's pretty much the same the way we train for it and they did outstanding, Sergeant. Meanwhile, Sergeant Charlie Gill reports on a Spanish team going at it on dry land. Another one of the most physically challenging parts of Bosalagra 88 is the obstacle course. 3,500 meters of running, climbing, and more climbing. The Spanish Army attacked the course as a group. In events such as this, not everyone excels, and the team's leader, First Lieutenant Liniers, believes it is the strong members who can best support the others. Because the, the better, the worse soldier has, the other soldiers has arrived at the, at the worse, worse soldier at two kilometers from here. If the cross, the, the worse uh, running, runner, uh, must be arrive at the, at the seal at, at the time of the other soldiers. And this is the difficulty of that run. These troops have prepared for this run by working out in the wooded areas in Spain. It paid off for them. They ran the course in just over 25 minutes. For them, the long day at Busalaga is over. However, soon the American 11th Armored Cavalry would try to best their time. In Oteen, West Germany, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. It was quite a battle in the infantrymen's Olympics today. With the latest, here's Sergeant Don McWilliams. Now at the halfway point in the competition, the Americans are holding their own with three first place positions, along with the Germans who also have three first, followed by the Canadians with two. The first Army Division team still leads in the Warsaw Pact identification event. The 11th ACR holds two first places, one in the obstacle course in which they broke a record, and the other in the tactical river crossing. First Army Division did not fare so well in the tactical driving event, placing ninth but one observer noted that their best events are still ahead. In about an hour, both American teams will begin the night reconnaissance exercise, which is a true test of the cavalry soldier's skills. In Oitin, West Germany, at Bozalager 88, Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams, AFN News. Good evening. Much of the attention throughout USERA is being focused on the Bozalager 88 competition for cavalry units. Corps commanders from 5th and 7th Corps are on site in Oitin to observe their team's performances. 
The 11th Armored Cavalry Team attacked the obstacle course with a vengeance, breaking a new record for this grueling event. Unlike most obstacle courses, tactical operations come into play. The first members of the eight-man team must clear the way for the others. The first of the 11th hit the targets quickly. That, historically, is unusual for an American team. But perhaps the final yards were the most exciting. I watched the Canadians run yesterday, and they had the fastest time. And when they got to the high step, which is almost to the end with the wires, they had the high step through it. I watched the Canadians walk, and I told the guys beforehand, I said, the Canadians walk. We were physically conditioned that when we get to that point, you remember those Canadians walking. And when you get to that point, and you run, and you're going to win. And when I, got, when I saw him get to that point, and every one of them was picking up his knees and running, that's when I felt the best. The 11th ACR is doing well in the Bosalago competition. By midweek, they were vying for a top spot. Although the team is not allowed to talk to the press until the competition is over, Deputy USER Commander-in-Chief Lieutenant General George Stotzer talked to the team about their military ambitions. Did y'all figure you would be doing something like this a couple years after you came here? I have no idea. Is that what you wanted, to think like this, or what you came in the service for? Yes, that's what you for when you come in the Army. That's right. Then you get in the Army, you don't always get the chance to do it. So when you see both flyers, that's why you volunteer to go for it. You come in the Army to be challenged, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And to do the tough jobs. Yes, sir. So you're doing that now, and that's what it's all about. The 11th ACR has only a few hours before they compete in the night reconnaissance portion of this competition, which is heavily scored and is one of the most complex skills of a cavalry soldier. In Oiteen, at Bosalager 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. The second day of Bosalager 88 was Bradley Fighting Vehicle Day for the first of the first AD. Sergeant Don McWilliam shows us their designated course action. Were given a time limit unknown to them to complete the off-road course. Along the way, they encountered several obstacles which required quick decisions while on the move. First, they needed to select the best place to stop behind a barrier, locate the target, and estimate its range. Then it was on to what is called the bottleneck or road underpass. The vehicle must be driven through one that is not too high or too low. Here is where the ability of the vehicle commander to think fast paid off. From the distance we were looking at it when we were stopped, we had decided on one. Yes, that one was close, but we said, well, let's go ahead and move and get another look at them. From when we get closer, maybe we can get a, a closer one. And right, as, just as we turned, we had just made the decision to go to the number one uh, bottleneck, they call it, and we moved there, and it was the right one. It was very At the next stop, the team had to drive up a hill to a point they felt comfortable with and spot the enemy without being seen themselves. The majority of the course is done with all hatches closed. In the final maneuver, one member has to leave the track and guide the driver over a bridge. Though there were a few problems, the crew commander was satisfied with his team's performance. We've been very well prepared. The, uh, the unit here that's hosting the competition has to give out station briefings explaining uh, the whole course, and we've been training to that, so we were not surprised by anything. We were well prepared. The next event for this team is the night recon exercise, as the Bozelager Cup 88 continues. In Oiteen, Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams, AFN. Sergeant Charlie Gill has the results just in on the next to the last day of cavalry competition. At this point, it's impossible to say who is really leading the Bosalago Cup competition. The events have so many varying values that a team could win every event and still lose by scoring low on, say, day reconnaissance, for example. However, the eight categories, the American teams are holding first place in half of them. The 11th Armored Cavalry team is very strong with three first place spots. Tomorrow, they go out to the 1st Armored Division's number one spot in Warsaw Pact identification. And the 1st Armored Division will try to top the 11th ACR's obstacle course record. At this point, it's anybody's ball game. However, one thing's for sure, the 1st Armored Division must do well in day reconnaissance to give them a chance at the cup, and they should finish up in about an hour. But it takes several hours to tally the points in this category because of its complexity. In Oiteen, West Germany, at Bosalager 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. Good evening. Bosalager 88 came to a close late this afternoon, and Sergeant Charlie Gill just phoned in the exciting results. There are 16 very happy American soldiers in northern West Germany right now. 7th Corps, 1st Squadron of the 1st Armored Division, has earned the top spot in the Bosalager Cup Challenge. 5th Corps, 1st Squadron of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, won second place. The competition among the 24 teams from 12 allied countries was the toughest ever. In fact, last year's winners, the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, bested its score from last year. The American Cavalry teams have been training for this week for the past nine months. 
it pay off today. When I asked it, it was all worth it. The looks on the soldiers' faces gave away a positive yes. In Orkin, West Germany, at Boselager 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. Repeating once again, the winner of the Boselager 88 competition was 7th Corps 1st Squad, 1st Armored Division. In second place was 5th Corps 1st Squad, 11th ACR. For the armored cavalry troops in Oitin at the Boselager 88 competition, last night had a thousand eyes. Sergeant Charlie Gill explains. Night reconnaissance is one of the toughest events for the eight-member teams in terms of tactical operations. Here's the situation. These soldiers, including the two American teams, will be given maps and issued the same equipment, such as flashlight, compass, and other aids. They are searched to make sure they have only the issue. In the darkness, they are dropped off in enemy territory and must find their way back to friendly lines, all the while avoiding the enemy and linking up with friendly troops. Time and accuracy are the two factors for winning. In the control room, nervous support soldiers wait for their team to make it to the various checkpoints. When a team does not show up, the praying begins. For the 1st Armored Division team, this night was one of their best performances, placing second behind a French team. Uh, we just pushed it all night really hard. We knew we had the French time to beat with six hours and 40 minutes. Uh, we fell a little short of that, but we knew we were pushing really hard. And the last point, we ran up a 400-meter hill. We just kept running, knowing we had to get to the end, so we pushed hard. Any, uh, any particular points he said, oh, my God, this is a hairy situation right now? No, actually, we found all the points pretty quickly. The only problem was the train in between them. We thought it would be kind of dry out there, and the guy who designed the course made him all go through all the swamps, so it was really slow going. Although the battle situation was simulated, running through the woods in the middle of the night has its hazards. Well, I was checking the fence out, and uh, I, I reached up to the top wires about three feet up, and uh, I didn't see the bottom when I crawled right into it. There are many philosophies about how to fight at night, but maybe it boils down to a simple approach. The night recon is uh, just really the humping, the part where, you know, you've got to get down and just do it, you know. You go, uh, you get the point, and you got like maybe a thousand meters to go. It's dark out. You just got to hump over the train. You just got to drive on. For these soldiers, the months of preparation paid off for this Boselager 88. In Oitin, West Germany, at Boselager 88, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. The saying that an army moves on its stomach was never more true than at the Boselager competitions, both literally, as in the case of night reconnaissance, and figuratively, as in what they were fed. Sergeant Don McWilliam shows us what the 11th ACR did to stoke the fires of their troops. The first of the 11th ACR decided that a properly fed soldier is a healthy soldier. The Iron Horse team brought with them over 30 support personnel to include their own fuel handlers. But it's that fuel for human consumption that some of the cooks who came along feel may have helped the 11th ACR do so well. Well, every day we cook uh, three meals a day. We cook breakfast, we have everything, bacon, sauces, and everything. And uh, we have lunch, hot meal too, and dinner meal. They're doing pretty good right now. I'm glad. I think it's because of the food, I think. Their diet is a special one designed to give the soldiers the best and most nutritional value possible. We come out here on Friday and we set up our MKT to feed the Boeslager team for uh, Boeslager International Competitions. And we feed them special meals and made up by a dietitian in our unit. I was designed to give them energy and they get a lot of har carbohydrates and give them a lot of that extra push as they need going through the competition. These cooks have been preparing special meals for this Boselager team and the other support crew for the past year now. They may not be out there participating in the events, but they certainly are players in making this Boselager team a winning one. In Oitin, West Germany, at Boselager 88, Air Force Sergeant Don McWilliams, AFN News. Good evening. Last Friday, the Boselager competition in northern Germany ended on a victorious note for the two American teams that took part. Sergeant Charlie Gill covered the week-long series of events that brought soldiers from 12 NATO countries together to test their military skills. We have highlights from the closing ceremonies at Oitin, West Germany. They gave up a lot this past year. When many of their fellow soldiers knocked off work on a Friday, these troops were preparing for night reconnaissance every Friday night. There were no shortcuts for the winners. The 1st Squadron, 1st Cavalry, 1st Armored Division. The same holds true for the troops who play second, the 1st Squadron of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment. The man who leads 7th Corps is proud of his 1st AD troops, and Lieutenant General Ronald Watts says this is something all soldiers should be proud of. 
But every event, they, uh, they showed their colors, they hung tough, and uh, we're really proud of them. These GIs didn't get a bonus paycheck. They won't endorse some sort of new combat boot. They did get a plaque, a medal, some minor injuries, and something else that you just can't spend. Now, these soldiers can go home and feel like they're winners. A couple of them are ETS and going back to college. Some are going to OCS, some are going to ROTC. Wallet, they will go home now feeling they're winners. So when they're 45, 50 years old, they'll always be able to look back and say they were world-class athletes or world-class soldiers able to compete against the best. The first AD came here an underdog, and the two first lieutenants who trained their soldiers placed a high value on camaraderie. Um, we didn't have a very large staff, um, but the training we did was quality, and our, our German partnership unit helped us out tremendously in training us and helping us train for the different events. The team showed an awful lot of heart, and it came through in all the events, and that's what did it for us. The best thing about this is American one-two punch overall for the second year in a row. There is no international challenge for scout troops tougher than Boselager. It is for soldiers who have a true desire to find out how they stack up against their counterparts. And while Americans have always emphasized winning, new standards have been set for every soldier who participated in this Boselager Cup 88. Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News. The British took third place in the international portion of the Boselager competition.